Hi everyone, this is Brent Simon. Uh, I want to give you a tutorial, a lesson on how to create your photo uh, using some tools. Now, I don't want to talk about necessarily taking the photo. I think most of you can probably take a photo uh, with your cell phone, with your um, you know, digital camera. Um, I don't think that's really the problem that people are having. But in order to avoid uh, the massive percentage of disqualifications that we see prior to the um, the selection of, of cases, I think it's really important that we understand the requirements for the photo. So I've created a blog post which gives a lot of information on, uh, on how you would create your own photo or advice and tips about you know, when you should um, just use a professional uh, photographer, for example, as opposed to trying to create your own photo. Um, the uh, the blog post has a number of links in it. I've also linked to a couple of online services, which will allow you to take a photo with your phone or whatever device you have against any sort of background you want. And then the online service will remove the background, replace it with a white background, and, uh, and, and also crop the photo um, to the right dimensions for the DV lottery submission. Now that's a great option. Um, the two services I've, um, I've shown will cost either $2.99, the other service is $7 per photo. Um, and so those are good options to use if you have some budget. Um, but if you can stand in front of a clean, white, plain background and take a photo in reasonable daylight, um, then you could actually do this for free. There's absolutely no need to, uh, to pay for that service unless you can't get the background um, uh, taken care of. So let me sh switch to showing you my computer. Um, I'll show you a couple of services here um, and a couple of examples. But I want you to consider this video as being a companion for my blog um, post about this same thing, because the blog post has way more information than I intend to give in this video. Okay, so uh, really, you know, you need to, to use both this video and the blog post. And of course, the blog post will be linked below in the, um, uh, in the uh, description below the YouTube video, okay? All right, let me um, switch over to, to the screen view of the world. And um, this is what I'm going to go through first. Um, so firstly, I want to show you a couple of, uh, oh, I want to show you actually uh, the photos that I've got as examples here and show you, um, show you what I started with, as it were, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm actually starting with and uh, what I was able to create spending a few dollars um from the photos that i took okay so here's the two photos that i took first of all let me just get rid of that one okay you can see that i stood in front of a plain brown off color uh background sort of uh, beige brown color now that background is in my opinion too dark to be used on the dv lottery entry i would not want someone to use that um uh, that background now it is true, and I have shown a video before where you can, uh, with clever lighting, you can overexpose the background behind uh, a person. Um, and you can, it's, in photography terms, it's called blowing out the background. You can blow out the background with a lot of white light, and then you can expose for the subject's face. And what happens is that the, the background, if it's a plain background, you can make pretty much any light color into a white background, right? But that takes a bit of photography skill, and I didn't want to go into that uh, again. I have created a, a video that explains that in the past, but honestly, I think that's uh, beyond the capabilities of most people, understanding the exposure that you'd have to set on the face, throwing enough white light onto the, onto the background to overexpose the background. It's just too complex for most people. So most people are probably going to be able to achieve um, a, uh, a photo similar to this, where you can stand in front of a background. I actually used a tripod to, and, and my phone uh, to take this photo. 
Um, and um, and as you can see, as I say, I've got a, a, a plain background there. The, the fact that it's plain makes life a little bit easier for the editing process later on, okay? So um, don't pay attention to the fact that I'm look, I look like an old guy. It's because I'm an old guy. That's just the way it is, okay? So that's one photo. Uh, the other photo that I have uh, is a slightly less happy looking, but, you know, similar sort of thing. Now, I just want you to pay special attention to a couple of things. My hairline, such as it is, um, is a short hairline. If I had a lot of curly hair, let's say, you would probably be able to see the color of the background through uh, through that hair. And in fact, in, in places, you can see the color of the background through, uh, through my hair, okay? So um, that in itself is going to present a problem if you get into digital um, uh, image uh, manipulation. So uh, I'll show a little bit what I mean by that later. The other thing I want to draw out for you is that I stood far enough away from the phone to have a relaxed face on pose, right? I've got a neutral expression. I'm not, I'm not uh, smiling, you know, overly smiling. The other photo um, was a little bit more smiley, I think, but that's okay. That's, that's a slight, you know, a slight smile, um, but that's okay, that's, that's fine. But again, my shoulders are straight on. My, uh, my face is looking directly into the camera. I know I'm looking directly into the camera because you can just see my ears on both sides of my head, right? That's an important clue that you've taken the proper uh, the photo properly. I should not be turned to one side. Uh, I shouldn't be looking up or down at the camera. I should be looking directly into the camera and the camera should be at the same height as I am, right? Um, I'm not wearing a hat. I'm not wearing any fancy jewelry. I haven't got a, um, any eyeglasses on, although I wear eyeglasses for reading. I don't wear eyeglasses all the time. And now the rules say that the photo should not have eyeglasses um, because of the reflection that sometimes come from, comes from eyeglasses, right? So this is a pretty good photo. What's wrong with it? The pose and everything is right. The background is not white or white enough. Um, and it can be off-white, but it's not white enough. Um, and, uh, and of course, the dimensions are wrong. It should be a square cropped photo, okay? So I want to show you a couple of things um, that we can do with, uh, with a photo like this. So we'll just put these examples away for a second. Um, and I'll show you a couple of online services. I'm going to firstly show you the, um, uh, the online um, process here. This is the uh, the government's own website, and it's actually quite useful because it gives you a number of sort of tips on various things about the size and position, uh, some basic examples. The green check mark means that these examples are all acceptable. Um, the size and po position of the of the photo once it's cropped into a square format should be that sort of dimension. Okay. You can see that you can see head and shoulders, head and shoulders of the subject. The head is about um, half, a little bit more than half of the total top to bottom of that of that photo. In this example, the head is too big. In this example, the person is too far away from the camera. In this example, the person is too far to one side. So this is just right. And if you go through this website, you can see a number of uh, tips on how you should be looking. Uh, don't look like you know any of these with the red uh, cross on them. They're all wrong. You just need a, uh, a pleasant straight in the camera pose. Uh, don't wear your glasses. They're all wrong. You can see that, that that's a problem. Um, you can wear a religious head covering um, if uh, the head covering does not completely obscure your face, okay? So if you wear on a day-to-day -day basis a head covering um, such as this, uh, then you are allowed to take the photo in that way. But don't have uh, you know, the head covering covering uh, parts of your face. It should only cover the, the, the hair, right? Same thing with these, um, with these other options, right? Um, there shouldn't be shadow thrown onto either the background or your face. Uh, you shouldn't overexpose the photo, as you can see in this example here. 
Um, the background itself should be completely plain and either white or off-white. You can see this particular background is almost a gray color. Um, so that's what they mean by off-white. It's not white exactly. It's not a bright white, but it's an off-white. This again is a, another sort of shade of off-white. But you should not have objects in the background, uh, other people in the background or anything like that. You know, don't have a map on the background. Um, the quality needs to be good quality. It needs to be in focus. Can't be blurry. Uh, can't be too grainy. You know, don't do not do that. And for children, uh, there's a particular point about children here. If you've got a very young child uh, where you would normally have to hold that child, um, you can't take that photo. So the best way that, that they recommend to do that is to actually lie the, the child down. If this is a very young infant, lie the child down on a white sheet, something like that, and stand above the child. Um, and with a sleeping child, you may even have to shout at the child to, to get the child to open its eyes, right? And I can tell you from experience, you can shout at the child and you'll have a couple of seconds to take a photo before the, the photo, before the baby starts screaming at you because you, you shouted at the child, you say boo or whatever. And uh, you'll have a few seconds to take the photo. They open their eyes, you take the photo and then they start screaming, okay? And mum won't be pleased, but that's the best way to get the photo. Um, so that's that's uh, important for kids. Um, and then, yeah, face obstruction. You mustn't have hair that comes down over your face. You mustn't have some sort of scarf or any sort of other clothing that comes over your face. And children shouldn't be wearing these sort of, uh, they're called dummies in the UK, but pacifiers in the, in the US, nothing else like that, okay? This photo is is uh, wrong in lots of ways. The, the child is not looking at the camera. Uh, the child has got something behind that is not plain. The child has, uh, you know, a pacifier dummy in his mouth. Um, you know, that's a, that's not a, a suitable photo. Okay, so that's uh, that's some good uh, some good information here on the right hand side. Now we can go through the process, and I'll just show you a couple of a uh, couple of things here. When I upload the photo, uh, actually, that's rejected. Yeah, so the photo, this particular photo, is overly compressed. I'm hoping I've got the other one. Yeah, uncompressed. Okay, there you go. So the uh, this tool has taken my photo, and it has figured out how that photo can be cropped according to um, according to the dimensions it's it's expecting to see. I would say that's a little more zoomed in on that photo than I would like personally, um, but it's it would be acceptable as far as the government's concerned, right? The other thing you can do sometimes it can't figure out exactly how to do this. So what you you can do is you can use this tool to show where the eyes are. The eyes are the most important part for photo recognition, and because you put the eyes in the right place then the uh, the photo will be cropped for you. And you can see it's gone and uh, marked that in green saying it's acceptable. And as you press accept and proceed, you've now got a cropped photo. But of course, in this particular case, I don't have a white background. So that still isn't good enough for me. Um, but at least it's cropped to the right size, right? So I could download that, that image to my device. And, uh, and there you go. All right. So that's using the uh, the online tool. So if you manage to achieve a photo with a plain white background, then you can use this, this uh, tool and it will crop to the right size. It'll be a two inch by two inch photo, uh, which is 600 by 600 pixels. Um, it'll be the right dimensions, in other words. It'll be the right crop and your face or head positioning should be more or less correct uh, if you use this tool, All right? So that's, and that's a free tool from travel.state.gov. I'll make sure the link is below my YouTube video and it is in the blog article. Then there are two other services that you can use. Um, now, here's the first one. Well, I'm gonna, I, I've demonstrated both of these, but or I've used both of these, but uh, let me show you how these services work. So. You can upload a photo. This particular, uh, this let me just start and introduce this. Um, this particular web page has a particular setting for the DV lottery, uh, which is one of the reasons I quite like it. Um, 
but this web page charges seven dollars per photo so uh, it's a slightly more expensive option but i'll show you what it does so you can upload a photo for a start just pick a photo it will upload that <clears throat> hopefully it will not break as i'm trying to demonstrate this so give it a few moments and it's going to try and fix head tilt, fix the background and fix the image contrast, right? So you can see there, it's already done its magic. There's a watermark all over it, so I can't use this. Um, in order to use this photo, I have to now continue to download and during the download process, they're gonna ask me to pay for the photo, right? And I have done that. And if you look on my, um, if you look on my blog page, you'll see an example of this photo that I've actually paid for and, and produced. And it's a pretty good uh, photo, I have to say. Um, uh, let me just show you the original here that I've paid for. So this is the, this is the one that I produced. And um, as we zoom in on this, you can see that it's done a pretty good job of keeping my hairline. Thank you, Visa Photo. I wanted to keep the rest of the hair. Um, it's done a fairly good job of the whole thing. And the dimensions are already correct so i don't even need to go to the uh the online system through travel.state.gov right so that's an acceptable photo and it that particular one cost me seven dollars uh very quick to produce that obviously if you've got a large family that's going to cost you a few dollars per person and so that might be a consideration um so that's one possibility the other uh, and, and i'll just show you briefly if you went to continue to download um, it would be like that. And um, what I'm going to do is also, let's do another one here. Get photo. Um, and here, this is a um, this is a similar sort of thing. It's creating a passport photo, 51 millimeters by 51 millimeters, which is two by two. Um, it's going to let me browse for the photo. I'm going to pick one of the originals here. It'll upload it. So it's uploaded that fine. Um, paper size, I'm gonna have an online application. Now you want to get your photo size below 240 KB. So I say 220 KB just for just to make sure. Um, loading that, that image. And then in, in this particular one lets you zoom in and out by using the scroll button on your mouse um, or uh, on your uh, on your computer you can do that with a phone same sort of thing and you'll just position your face roughly within the uh, the two uh, oval features here to make sure that once you get a square crop you're going to be in the right position um, you can do a little bit of adjusting exposure but I would advise you uh, to avoid that if you can all right and uh, as you go through, there's also an option to dress you up. Don't do that. <laughs> um, this is good. Don't pick a dress to, to wear or anything. You can finish that. And then this particular one will let you automatically remove the background. Okay. So you have to go through this extra step. You can download it right now to your device. Again, this, this is not an acceptable photo because the background is not white. So for me, I had to pay two ninety nine, two dollars ninety nine, um, to get uh, to get their AI system uh, to produce the the photo. Um, and yeah, this particular one errors, but uh, but I'll show you what I was able to produce with this website earlier. Um, this is this is their result. And again, pretty good result here. It's kept all my hair there. It's not altered my image at all, right? It, so that's going to be acceptable there. Although it's be, been edited for the background, it's not obviously been edited for the background, right? And uh, that's an important um, difference uh, that you need to pay attention to, all right? So that would be an acceptable photo. I was quite pleased with that result, and it cost $2.99. So that's not too bad at all. And if you've got a number of people in your family, that's, um, uh, that's, that's important, okay? Uh, I just wanna show you something I saw here. 
Um, 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 um. Let's see. Face obstruction. Background. No, I don't think. There was an example I saw earlier that showed. Yeah, no, none of those, I'm afraid. Face obstruction. No, none of those. But um, resolution plot. No. Um, so there was an example I saw earlier, which was actually pretty good, um, that showed how an edited photo could be pretty bad. What I did do is on the article that I've just written, I showed uh, an example here of what I did by using an online uh, Photoshop system. Now, here's, I, I was able to log into Adobe Express. I created an account. Um, and that's a free account. And it has a tool to remove the background. So I've, I've used one of these photos I've just showed you um, and uploaded that and was able to create this photo. The thing, the problem I have with it is, uh, and if I show you back in the file, this is the Photoshop example. The problem I have with this is that it hasn't really respected my hairline. It's got a slight sort of flattened area there. And to me, it, may, it makes it fairly obvious that that photo has been edited digitally. Um, and that's why I don't like that photo. So although that was free for me to re remove the background, I wasn't very satisfied with the results. So you could try it. Go to Adobe, uh, adobe.com. Um, there are other services like that or other software applications like that. It's a bit more complex to use. Um, and so I actually, I don't recommend it. Um, I'm not recommending that particular uh, option. I think that's, uh, particularly if you've got a lot of hair, that's gonna be a problem. Um, so uh, as I've mentioned in my blog art article, those are the two photos that I find acceptable. Um, and, uh, and I've explained in my blog, art blog article the process that I took to get there. Um, and I've also given some tips here about the process step by step of uh, how you can create the photo okay um and it, it, fundamentally what you're trying to achieve here is a good photo yes of course but uh the background is the key differentiation between whether you're going to pay some money for the online service or not right to remove the background and so if you can do a good job of the photo and stand in front of a white background you can actually do this whole thing for free, okay? So, um, so there you go. Please go and read the uh, the article. I've got all sorts of information in there about uh, the rules about the photo. Um, I've got links to the original instructions, um, and I've got some information about how many people have been um, refused uh, simply because of the photo. It is enormously important to your application that you have the right photo. Um, so, uh, please go, go and read the blog, blog article, have a look at the examples there and decide for yourself which route you're going to take and see what you can do and create these photos early. By the way, the lottery entry period for this year is going to open in a few days time, but don't forget you've got the whole month in which to enter. So if you don't have these photos available today, don't rush about it. Take your time over the photo. What you don't want to do is create a photo that gets your application rejected straight away. Okay, so uh, you may as well take a few extra days. There is literally no difference in your chance of being selected, whether you uh, enter on the first day or the last day or any day in between. The, uh, the selection process is entirely random and is, does not give any advantage to people who enter the lottery first or last or any other any other routine, right? So take your time about this and make sure you've got a good photo. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, I've got another video that I've produced which gives a step-by-step -step guide on how you enter the lottery and how you answer the questions. There's only uh, 15 questions to answer. It's a simple process. Um, and so I hope you will follow that process through yourself and don't pay an agent to do that for you. Um, and so create a photo, enter the lottery, 
And who knows, maybe you could be selected, maybe you could win a green card to come and live in America um, and, you know, and live your best life over here. It really is a wonderful uh, and free opportunity. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel to make sure that uh, um, uh, you're, you're keeping in touch with the information. And once you've entered the lottery, keep your fingers crossed and the results will be out in May. Um, and, and you'll find out then whether, whether you've been selected or not. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.